friends and neighbors. It is I, Raina, the Witch of What Today I'm going to show you how to make this stylish hat. I'm just kidding. It's a bowl or a sculpture or a vase or maybe something that you can put around a flower pot. But um, I wouldn't recommend it as a hat. It doesn't stick. It just slip slides all over the place. Not real comfortable either. I've been having a lot of fun making things out of resin lately. So I've been venturing into the land of no molds and just freeform pouring. This is actually only the second one I've made and uh, there's some good and there's some bad. There's some things that I learned and there's some things that I learned not to do or to do in order to not do them. First things first, let's address the element. First things first, let's address, blah, Raina, can't talk. First things first, let's address the element. <sighs> elephant, elephant. Address the elephant in the room. You are probably wondering why. You are probably wondering why my resin is yellow. Yes, it is yellow. That your eyes are not deceiving you. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I try to film these and like don't have a glass of wine in my hand and I'm like stone cold sober. I just blah, 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 all over my words and I sound like a complete jerk. I should probably just pause this and go get a glass of wine. You know, I think I'm going to. I'll be right back. <sighs> All right, I'm back. And I promise things will be better this time, right? Always look on the bright side of life. Important lesson learned from Mel Brooks. And hopefully I can impart an important lesson or two to you here tonight, today. Whenever you're watching this, it's, it's tonight, you know, it'd be a problem if it were 9 a.m. and I'd be like, <laughs> wine time, that would be an issue. Let's get back to that elephant in the room, shall we? <laughs> See, already better. You may be looking at that and saying, is that resin brown? You are right. That resin is brown. Your eyes are not tricking you. That is legit a very gross color. I'll tell you what happened. I bought a gallon of resin and I bought it to put you know, resin layer over my coasters. And this particular resin, uh, I tried it, hated it. I mean, Bubble City, I couldn't get the bubbles out for anything, you know, not even, I couldn't even torch them out. I was just like done, right? I don't even like the stuff. So I set it aside and uh, I just let it sit for months and it oxidized and it turned brown. And that happens basically to all resins. So maybe I'm just being particularly hard on this particular brand that I'm not going to mention because that's not very classy. But let me tell you, I've learned a thing or two or 27 about resin since. If you open it and even if you close it and put it in a dark corner, it's still gonna oxidize. It's caused by, you guessed it, oxygen, which gets in there and turns it brown. So you should use resin up as fast as you can. You know, don't buy more than you're gonna use because then you're just gonna, you're gonna end up with like disgusting urine colored resin. Now there's only one thing you can do with that and it is color it. Since buying that resin, I have switched brands and I can tell you that if you're interested in doing this, either stone coat countertops or art resin are very good and very useful for this, both heat resistant and food safe. So you could actually, you know, use that bowl for things like salad or chips or not hats. I had a commission to recreate a piece I had made before that was King of Pain in Meteorite. This is a navy blue, almost black, and this is a really cool faux stone color. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a few moments. I poured a full cup of resin, divided it into four ounces of each, and the project I was making needed two ounces, so I ended up with, you know, two ounces of each for this bowl, two ounces of King Pain, two ounces of Meteorite. I poured another cup of resin and then divided that up into four other colors. So we're looking at about two ounces per color that went into this entire bowl. Eight, yeah, six colors. Yep, two ounces each. Wow, math, math can be really hard sometimes. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm just, <sighs> I'm tired, okay. What am I not tired? I should just like rename my name, like the witch of what the nap or the witch of what the insomniac or the witch of never sleeps. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a poll and you can vote and tell me what I should rename myself to. <laughs> anyway, so I had these two colors. It's like almost black and it's like 
almost stone and I knew I was gonna have plenty of leftover and I was like, hey, you know, I think I'll make another bowl. This is actually only the second bowl I have made. And I thought, well, well, colors would go with it. And I had the idea of brainstorming uh, after a while of doing like a night sky, you know, the sky, not sunset colors, but after sunset, twilight, you know, without the sparkly vampires. Night sky colors starting with like the normal sky and then fading into black with stars. So, and clouds, you know, meteorite clouds. That's what I decided to do. I started this bowl with indigo waves. Indigo waves is blue. It has a very lovely gold shimmer and gold cast to it. So it's almost like a warm blue, not that there is such a thing as a warm blue, but this will complement warm colors well because of the gold. It's like almost color shift, but I don't know if it's technically color shift, it probably is. Some angles you look at it, you see the gold pretty strongly and it is beautiful and very, very usable for a bright blue and I highly recommend trying this. Around that, I poured Lakeside. Lakeside is pretty much the best teal I could possibly imagine. It is the perfect mix of blue-green and the saturation is amazing. The mica just adds a layer of perfection. It is truly one of my absolute favorite colors. I haven't even finished this yet. I poured this months ago and haven't even painted it. It's a little, it's a little witch hat, you know. You can't really see it. I'll show you another one that you can see a little better. But this, uh, this is Lakeside with some glitter in it. And the glitter is just kind of a, a complementary shade of blue holographic, an ultra, ultra micro fine. And it is just a stunningly beautiful color. So that is like side. After that, I poured sapphire. Sapphire is the most glorious and most beautiful of all of the blue shades. I love this. It is so deep. It actually does look like sapphire if you know your sapphire is heavily included <laughs> and not at all clear. That is sapphire by itself. There is no additives to this. Isn't that just stunning. I haven't cleaned the paint off yet. <laughs> I used some copper paint and I painted and I, and I forgot. It's a little witch hat. It's got crystals and flowers. It's so cute. It'll be better when I actually clean it, but it's sapphire. Just look at that color. I think it's way better in resin than it is when you mix it with foreign medium for fluid pigments. There's just something about this, the crystal clear resin. Just, ah, after that, I added Nebula. Nebula is an interesting shade. It is a deep green with some blue to it. It's like an, if there were a thing as a navy green, <laughs> that's what this color is. It's deeper than tail feather. It's really quite lovely and I have plans for this. I have not poured with this alone yet, but I certainly, oh my gosh. Turns out I haven't even opened this jar. I've been using a sample envelope, but it is a really great color and I look forward to sharing creations with you in the future of how this looks, but it is beautiful. We're back to King of Pain. So I'm gonna talk about this for a minute because it looks black, but it's not. It's Pain's Gray. For you to really see what I am talking about, I need to open this up uh, and hold the jar, you know, where the light sees it. And you can see that it is actually like a navy blue. It is very pretty. Oh shit. Pretend I didn't do that. <sighs> oh boy, <laughs> it's gonna cause a mess. Um, anyway, <laughs> Whew. now that I'm, you know, slaughtering piggies on screen, this is a great color. Uh, it does look black when you put a lot in, but if you are very sparing with it, you can get more of the like, navy blue and it's pretty spectacular. All right, and the clouds, meteorite. I haven't bought a jar of this yet, but it is, believe me, like the next one because I'm nearly out of my little sample pack and I love it. It is like the best stone color. It's neutral, so it'll go with any decor. And it's got like enough gray and brown in it and shimmer and like, it's not even when it cures, it's got movement in it and it's glorious. This is maybe the perfect color if you're making anything for a man or somebody who just does not like bright colors for some sick reason. But this is an amazing color. I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it to try it because there is really no limit with what you can do with it and colors that you can pair with it. It's like the perfect neutral. It'd be good in beach scenes. It'd be good in forest colors. I mean, really, I can't think of a reason not to use it or a color that would really clash because it is just, it is neutral. 
it'll work anywhere. The commission I was making needed glitter, so I used my very favorite glitter of all time. This is Black Holographic by Recollections. You can get this at Michael's. I think it is awesome and gorgeous, and I actually have a guitar in this finish, and it's the sexiest guitar on earth. <laughs> anyway, I put some in the King of Pain, and then I put a little bit less in the Nebula and even less than that in the Sapphire because I wanted to kind of, um, you know, have a gradient of glitter as well as a gradient of color. Once I had it all poured, I got out my heat gun and just aimed it at it and popped all the bubbles and then just started melting the colors into each other. And they do make attachments for heat guns. I don't have any yet. Yet, I'll be getting some <laughs> just to, you know, direct the heat a little more. They have like narrower nozzles and they have that like that flat thing that you can put on the end of a hair dryer. I have no idea what it's called. You probably do, but I don't. Uh, always wear a respirator, just happy safety tip there. You will notice there is a divot, <laughs> a very strange divot. What I found out after the fact is there is a drop of hardened resin underneath my mat. And the height differential was just enough to cause that, you know, big gaping gash. I'm probably gonna get called into HR for saying that big gaping gash. I can't, probably can't say that on YouTube either, can I? Does YouTube have an HR department? I know Facebook does, an experience. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, not all is lost though, because you know what that a big gaping gash is good for? Holding a paintbrush. <laughs> It's gonna be like the world's most stylish paintbrush bath for an artist. Or, you know, um, a really over-the-top spoon rest. It could still have a great use, you know? In fact, drop me a comment below and tell me what you would use this big gaping gash for. I am pouring on a 24-inch round silicone mat that is from Fluid Art Co. I was fortunate enough to get a tester. They should be available soon, if not yet in the United States. They are available in other countries, but we are undergoing right now in late October, early November of 2021, a very strange problem with shipping and customs and all that sort of thing. So if you want one, just keep your eyes peeled because uh, they're very appealing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a dork, but that's okay. After I blew it all out, I thought it was a little sparse in the middle, so off camera, sorry, I just took a popsicle stick and drew some spirals in and then did film blowing them out with the heat dryer. I just thought it needed a little more interest, so that's the thing I did. Now, every resin is a little bit different and it also depends on your room temperature, but I waited four hours until this was set enough, I thought, to lift it up and put it over the mold. The mold in this case is an upside down flower vase, but you know, there's a lot of things. I used a lampshade for my previous project. You could use a, a drinking glass if it's small enough. Uh, you could use a wine glass or even a wine bottle if you wanted something very tall and very narrow. There's a lot of things that you can do and you're only limited by your own imagination. So go forth and have quite a bit of fun with whatever the hell you want to cover in resin. This mat is thick. It is fiberglass that is double coated. So when I put it over anything with a round base, it wants to take like a square shape. That is why I am taking things like tubes of paint <laughs> and um, other things that are just within reach and putting that up underneath to prop it up. You'll see that extra pair of hands that I was fortunate enough to have. Those are the hands of Mr. What the F*** himself. That is a nickname coined by Mitchell Rima. He runs a channel called Rain and Pores, which is very educational in fluid arts. So if you are interested in finding a channel that teaches you some more things like A to B to C, like a teacher does, please check out Mitchell's channel. He is awesome. I have got it linked right here. <laughs> Thanks, Mitchell. I am forever going to call John Mr. What? Another word to the wise, when you are ready to lift your creation and drape it over whatever you're gonna drape it over, make sure that you set that up before you put your hands up underneath. I made that mistake of not having it set up, so <laughs> hence I had to call in reinforcements to, you know, put the vase where I needed it to go so I could set it back down. <laughs> Just one of those silly things I really don't think about. That's what kinds are for, right? After I got it all arranged, I let it sit, and I actually let it sit for 24 hours because I didn't want to take any chances, even though it felt fully cured after 12. I just, I just wanted to play it safe. I left it for 24. And then 
we come to the extra fun part, which is unpeeling. This mat comes off pretty easily. There's people that use the very thick plastic that you put under uh, flooring, like vinyl flooring, laminate, that kind of stuff. You can use that kind of plastic. You can use saran wrap, though that, it's almost too flimsy and also it can get, get stuck sometimes. I, I'm not a saran wrap person. If I'm gonna use something else, I would use that really thick flooring plastic. It comes off easy. And what can I say? I have got a very beautiful bowl right here. I like how it turned out. And now I am going to say au revoir, you know, picture wise. And I'm just gonna tell you how pretty this is. I'll take you in for some close ups. I'm gonna show it to you outside. Oh, before I go, let me just say this thing about this little piggy pigments. Everything about this looks opaque, right? But when you get some light behind it, these babies, that is some like beautiful, beautiful translucence here. And you can get some really cool effects. You can even do kind of a stained glass thing if you are a little more sparing with your pigments than I tend to be. Check it out. Enjoy. I hope that you make some and why don't you tag me in your Instagram posts so I can see them. My tag is at which of WTF, also at Painted Raina. You can use that one too. You know, I had to make a separate one that didn't have the word which of what the f in it because some people take odd offense to odd things. Um, so yes, at Painted Raina, that is just art and nothing else about my not so crazy anymore life, but you know, music stuff, fun stuff. So post your bowls, tag me in them so I can see them, leave a comment below, tell me what colors you wanna see because I've got like 10 million ideas but I could always use more. I'll stop pointing at you with this paintbrush now and take you in to see this beautiful, beautiful creation. Until next time, ciao and cheers.